Good morning and well, welcome to worship this morning. Good morning. It is a traditional uh, Sunday come February where there is a hustle and bustle happening in our church space. And so uh, we celebrate today that there is so much hustle and bustle happening. The Sunday is also Transfiguration Sunday, and so we will be heading into Lent this week. Over the Sundays after Epiphany, we have seen Jesus show up, show himself up to be Christ, the anointed one by God to be our Savior. This Sunday, the Transfiguration concludes the time after Epiphany, as Jesus appears on the mountain in divine glory. Keep in mind that in three days on Ash Wednesday, we begin the climb to the mountain of Jesus' crucifixion. The church holds side by side the glory of God and the cross of Jesus. So this Sunday, we hold that tension. We begin our worship today with our confession and forgiveness. As you are able, please stand. <laughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of the darkness and light, word of truth and wind, sweeping over the waters. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant, renew your creation, restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. Now that you're all standing, I hope you sing with gusto this morning, because I'm going to throw a curveball at you so we can have some fun with our first song, since it's a good children's song. We're going to sing it two times through. The first time we sing it, we are all going to sing all the words together. But the second time, the second time we sing the song, this time you are going to sing the Halle Halle Alleluia part. This side, you're going to sing the Praise Ye the Lord. Please give me a head of affirmation that you understood those directions. All right, with enthusiasm. All right, Pam, I think they can do it. Thank 
with your meeting. <laughs> The first reading is from 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Today's reading centers on the transfer of power and authority from the prophet Elijah to Elijah. Their travels which retrace the path of Joshua back to Moab, the place where Moses died, and the parting of the waters demonstrate that Elisha and Elijah are legitimate successors of the great prophet Moses. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elisha said to him, Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one, to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elijah kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. You guys will read Psalm 50 responsibly. You can find it in your bulletin. The Mighty One, God the Lord, has spoken. Calling the earth from the rising of the sun to a setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God shines forth in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence. With us is the flame of war and round about a raging storm. God calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of the people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant. The heavens declare the right, rightness of God's cause. Praise God. The second reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. The spotlight of Christian ministry is not on the people who carry out ministry, but on the Lord Jesus Christ. Just as God made light shine in creation, God makes the light of Jesus Christ shine in our lives through Christian ministry. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. 
For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Easter, yeah. 
Starting on Wednesday, we no longer say the word Alleluia. And then when we get to Easter, we can say it again. It's a little bit opposite of putting decorations up, right? Yeah, that's because it's a holy word, a joyful word. And during the set, during Lent, we're a little bit somber, a little, a little sadder, and we put it away. So it helps us remember when we get to Easter to be super joyful. So, except before we put it away, we get to say it a lot though. So, on the count of three, you're going to say hallelujah at the top of your lungs. Can you guys be loud? Do you think we need all the other people in the church to help us say it at the top of their lungs? No. No. Elsie, you're going to be really loud? Okay. On the count of three, after I say three, you're going to shout real loud, hallelujah. Right? Okay. Not that. All right. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Now, I think the... It was a little quiet. I think we need some background help from the older children of God. Oh, two kids back there. Yeah, they're just waiting. All right, older children of God that are behind me here, on the count of three, can you join us and say hallelujah? Ready? One, two, three. Hallelujah! That's really great. All right, you guys can go to Sunday school. You're going to Sunday school. Go back to your seat. Go back to your seat. anyone remembers this sign it is hung up most of the year outside the office door but then I just put it down for the season of Lent you may not know that fact but you kind of hear that fact that we put the, that word away during the season of Lent because you won't hear it in our gospel acclamation, in our songs. We just quietly put it away. And then we come back on Easter singing those songs, Christ has risen, Alleluia. There are more than a couple dozen songs that use Alleluia or Hallelujah in our hymnal. And we bring those back in the Easter season. But we enter this Lenten season holding it back, treasuring it, and waiting to sing it again. So we walked into Lent. It's a penitential time of reflection and confession. But then we hold it in tension, knowing Easter is coming. And we sing about the joy of God's glory. So this Transfiguration Sunday, in this gospel, we have the joy of God's glory in the revelation of God. The vision of Christ is as Lord, as if he appeared shining with heavenly glory and splendor and the radiance of God's presence. This gospel lesson, at this time of year, every year, marks this transition from the beginning of the year we heard the baptismal story of Jesus up to this Sunday before Lent and the disciples' vision of Christ's transfiguration, <clears throat> hearing these words again of God's, this is God's beloved, with whom he is well pleased. <clears throat> and then we walk into Lent. Narratively, the story leads us from Jesus' calling through the disciples' calling to this mountaintop experience of the glory of God. You could actually sing the psalm here as if you were a disciple witnessing on the mountain. So, this doesn't happen a lot, but if you would indulge me and close your eyes during the sermon, you get a free pass. I won't think you'll be falling asleep. But close your eyes and imagine that you, too, are on the mountaintop. The clouds have descended. You're with other disciples and Jesus. 
and you hear these words singing out loud. The mighty one God the Lord has spoken, calling the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God shines forth in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence with a consuming flame before and round about a raging storm. God calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of the people. <coughs> Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with a sacrifice. The heavens declare the righteousness of God's cause, for it is God who is judge. And then you come down from the mountain. You may open your eyes again so you don't fall asleep during the rest of the sermon. You come down from the mountain and that glory, singing and praise and that transfiguration. You come down from the mountain and all the radiant brilliance of God's majesty. And we walk into Lent, remembering we are dust and to dust we shall return. Back to that question before, walking into Lent, a penitential time of reflection and confession, how do we balance that while maintaining the joy of God's glory? The joy of God's glory has the disciples wanting to celebrate and honor the majesty of God and building a monument to the moment to capture the importance of God showing up. The brilliant light that no bleach could match has helped us create this image in our songs, Christ our light, the light of God, this little light of mine, even from 2 Corinthians, let the light shine out of the darkness. But then you come off the mountaintop, and the glow of the mountaintop seems to fade. Reality is that life goes on. When glory looks so much sweeter and failure so much more likely. Where the sweet by and by meets the nasty here and now. But we have to hold on to that light. We have to remember that light that from that mountain can be carried within us. And when we share and let that light shine from us, others can continue to have that light when reality is crashing down on them. The soberness of Lent could be the opposite of joy. You could let it be the opposite of joy. Or in your reflection, your discipleship practices, whatever you choose to practice, what if it's giving something up, which is very common, adding something on, changing the habit, doing something different, whatever discipleship practice you choose during this time, you could choose to have that practice help you find the joy of the Lord in all of God's glory. The impressiveness, what makes joy of the Lord incomprehensible is that coming off the mountain, going into the valley, that in the valley, those moments, days, even months, that are the opposite of what the mountain is, God is still there. Turn the page too far. And when God is still there, we have to remember the light. We look to the disciples who had led the early followers, having witnessed this brilliance of this transfiguration of God shining brightly. And then the brutality of the crucifixion. And then the astonishing power of the resurrection to go out and witness to all that. How did they remain faithful? How did they be the light in the world? How did they lead the church? And then ask, how do we? How do we walk into Lent, walk into life, keeping the joy of God's glory as a light that cannot go out? Well, take assurance. And then that in you, you can sing praise be to God, hallelujah, because you are free to confess your sins, 
hang them on that cross, be forgiven, and given new life with that empty grave when we can preach again on Easter morning, when we can sing, praise be to God, hallelujah, and be the light that the light has been given to us. Praise be to God, hallelujah, amen. Let us sing together our hymn of the day, hymn number 715.
accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. Who has spoken through the prophets? We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. We pray for the church that the transformational power of God enters the hearts of all people. May its leaders serve as examples of your grace and healing across time and space. God of grace, receive our prayer. We pray for those charged with leadership, lawmaking, and governance of our towns, states, and countries, that they will strive for goodness and justice all the days of their lives and callings. God of grace, we pray for those who are sick and suffering, especially those in our prayers, Rashila, Roberta, Colleen, Noreen, Kathy, Richard, Sandy, Mark, Jerry, Glenn, the family and friends of Helen, and others who are in our thoughts and in our hearts. Guide us to offer hospitality, shelter, friendship, and care to any in need. God of grace, we pray for this congregation and its ministry in the wider community. May we share the transforming beauty and love of God in ways that honor the dignity of all who we encounter. God of grace, knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us extend that peace to our neighbor.
And it's also a really cool week because there's also church council and worship at Life Care. You can join us at worship at Life Care. Uh, other things that just, oh, it's also Valentine's Day on Wednesday. Man, there's just a lot. So if I have forgotten something that's happening this week, there is a lot. Um, one thing coming up in the future is there is no Sunday school February 25th. Are there any other announcements since there is quite a bit? Yes. 8 a.m. Friday, we'll do another men's breakfast <coughs> devotion, a uh, full Bible study, so you don't have to worry about studying ahead of time, but get together, have some pancakes, and um, any men that want to join us, 8 a.m. Friday. 8 a.m. Friday, men's breakfast, <laughs> small devotion, not a full Bible study. Way to sell it. I appreciate it. Any other announcements? Any announcements from the fellowship hall? Anything that needs to be stated from out there? Are you good? Okay, I got a thumbs up. You're good. Okay. Uh, don't if you got subs, don't forget to pick them up after church. That's I think that's the announcement you're going with. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm. That's a very uncomfortable <laughs> thumbs up from Joe, but I, you're smiling, so I'm going with this. Okay. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, no other announcements unless I'm forgetting something. Y'all stare? Okay, let us stand and receive our offering. Take 
and eat. This is my body given for you and do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me, for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of this bread. Raise us up to be the body of Christ, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And may this not be the day. Don't forget them. At Jesus' table, heaven and earth are joined as one. Come and see.
Go in peace. You are God's beloved.